This video is for you if you find yourself thinking, help, why do I attract unavailable partners? Or why do I constantly attract jerks or idiots or whatever you want to call people? And I'm not equating the two. I'm not saying because you're unavailable, you're a jerk or you're an idiot. That's certainly not the case. But it's. I just want to do a video to get you thinking about why you are in the romantic pattern you're in and why you might be attracting the people you are attracting to. So in this video, we are going to talk through five questions that you can actually ask yourself to get to the bottom of your romantic patterns um, and ask yourself why you are attracting certain people. If you don't know me, my name's Caitlin. I'm a love and life coach who helps women in particular find great relationships and change how love feels. Um, and that's with other people, but also changing how they feel about themselves as it does all start with you. So this question really came up um, a couple of weeks ago when I started coaching with a new client. And that really was one of the topics that she wanted to get to the bottom of. She was successful. She had everything together. She had amazing friends. She was very close to her family. But her pattern was that she would attract people consistently who didn't treat her well, who didn't want to commit, who were blow hot and cold, who um, could kind of take or leave what she was offering. But there wasn't that stability and there wasn't that security. And she tended to be more attracted to people where there was a lot of chase um, or a little bit more intensity or drama and things like that, which I'm sure so many people can resonate with. So here are five questions that you can ask yourself to start to get to the bottom of why. So the first question is, do you believe that you are lovable the way you are and that you deserve to be treated well and that you deserve the love that you want and that is out there and that is healthy and that is happy? And this really is the big one and it has to be the fundamental kind of question we ask ourselves as certainly for me and a lot of my clients, when we are going through perhaps destructive romantic patterns or things that don't feel good, it can often come back to our inner belief of what we think we deserve, how lovable we are and whether we're good enough. Because if you are doing things like people pleasing and trying to mould yourself to somebody else and guess what they want and be that, or feeling like you've got to do, be, um, act more perfectly in order to get love, or you know whether you um, don't have any boundaries, and or perhaps on the other side of the scale, you know whether you've got huge walls up and you're really trying to keep people out. Sometimes a lot of these questions can come back to, you know, whether you do you feel that kind of love is in within your story and the work would really be around changing these belief patterns you know they say re relationships are a mirror to what's going on with us and kind of water finds its own level so we do have to start looking within because with that really what we can end up doing if somewhere down the line we've learned that we're not very lovable or we're not enough or we've picked up and internalized that from somewhere we can spend so much time trying to prove that we are that we are lovable that we can do it um, and it becomes something that we crave but it becomes something that we think is going to fix us so that's really why we want to work on those beliefs Number two is, are you overvaluing chemistry and the chase um, in comparison to things like compatibility? And that is another video that I've done on this topic, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But when we think about how we've been taught to love, right, we get taught to love in certain ways through parents, through friends, through role modelling, um, through and through society. And society teaches us that love is drama and fireworks um, and passion, you know, through Disney and rom-com and fairy tales and um, the uh, man chases the woman and he changes and becomes available. That's usually the sort of gendered stereotype, isn't it? Um, plus, not, a, not all of us grew up um, in environments where love was stable and calm. There could have been a lot of um, intensity or walking on eggshells emotionally. Um, or, you know, perhaps one parent wasn't available to meet your needs. Plus the fact that our brain is actually wired to respond um, more kind of addictively and positively to rewards that are unpredictable. So when we're not sure what we're going to get, we get pretty obsessed with that thing. So sometimes actually when somebody is unpredictable or is unavailable, 
it sends little signals in our brain and you know internally physically we um, are kind of conditioned to lean into that so I would ask yourself this question because love is actually meant to feel calm it's meant to feel like coming home it's meant to feel content it's meant to feel safe um, and sometimes I do a lot of work with clients around this topic because not you know um, sometimes home wasn't a safe environment so we have to learn to create the feelings of contentment and safety within ourselves before looking for a relationship but i would slow down do the work on compatibility um there's a visualization on my website as well that can help you provoke those feelings of what it would be like to be in that healthy happy relationship so we almost need to recondition ourselves about what we're going to look for Question three, and this is the one nobody wants to answer because we all think we are ready, available and willing to be in a relationship a lot of the time. So question three is, how available am I really? Because usually if you're going for people who aren't available um, and you are chasing or choosing unavailable love, you are avoiding available love, okay? So choosing unavailable love is the same as avoiding available love. So if you're avoiding available love, why? And often, um, if there is a part of us that isn't ready to um, be seen, or we are very fearful of being accepted or for who we are and seen as who we are, then actually it can feel safer in some ways to go out with people where there is a barrier, even though, rationally it sounds really counterproductive doesn't it you know I sat there for years saying I wanted to be in a relationship but I would pick people consistently who weren't available and actually when I did the really deep work on me I wasn't emotionally ready to let somebody in and I think a lot of us feel like this more than we're ready to admit it doesn't mean it's the whole of us but it might be a part of you that really is holding on to not wanting somebody in not wanting to let somebody in because we let somebody in, we've got to be vulnerable, we've got to be seen, we've got to be the real us. And that's a lot scarier than dating people where there is that kind of superficial chase and excitement and drama and you know, you can't really have them anyway. So do the work on actually how available you are and use that as your starting point. Number four, and this is a question I love. Are you dating in line with your values? So what I see a lot is when there is, when something feels disconnected in your dating life, when something doesn't feel right, sometimes actually it can relate back to the fact that you are dating outside your own values. And a common example of this is if a value for you is security, whether that's financial, emotional, um, job security, um, and family values, for example, let's say those are two of yours, but you are dating people who aren't available or who don't treat you well, who, who aren't secure or who don't want a relationship or who have amazing jobs, but they travel the world and there isn't that element of security or they don't want a family, they don't want a relationship, they don't want anything you want, then you are dating outside of your values. And when we're doing that, it affects how we feel about ourselves, it affects the choices we make, and really it feels like internally something isn't working for us. So often this is a question that's overlooked, but values are incredibly important when you're dating. Um, that's why in the January challenge that I'm running the 16th, the 19th, we are going to be doing a whole session on values, how you can get to the bottom of them and what the values are that are going to shape every area of your life, but especially dating and who you choose as your romantic partner. The fifth question to ask yourself is a big one, and we've touched upon this a little bit already, but it's, does this dynamic feel emotionally familiar in some way? So often when we look back at our past, um, it can be important to consider actually what environment we grew up in or what environment we had our first romantic experience in. And this, if we are looking at childhood or teenagers or something like that, and we are looking perhaps at the dynamic at home, it's important that we do this without judgment and blame because this isn't about alienating or penalizing parents. It's just about looking at how you learn to love. So often what 
you know we kind of see and what they say is that if you are consistently choosing a romantic partner who isn't available you are on some level recreating a pattern of the past you're recreating that familiarity because as humans we always go back to what we know we love the familiar that's why it's so hard to create change because we will constantly be drawn back to what it is that we've already experienced and that's not necessarily a bad thing but it's certainly one to be aware of because if perhaps let's say a caregiver wasn't emotionally available to you or um, you spent seven years in a relationship with somebody going back and forth who wasn't available to you um, it, it can be quite um, easy to look for that going forward and what usually it means is we will seek out somebody who's unavailable or we will become the unavailable ones ourselves or we will use romantic relationships to try and kind of fix patterns from the past and fix you know your parents dynamic or something like that or or those very formative experiences so this that question is probably one to dive into with a coach with a therapist somebody who has um had some training in inner child therapy um but it's definitely one that, that i always look at with clients when we are exploring patterning so that's it from me i hope these five questions were helpful i'll just pop them up um, as a reminder for you, but please do get in touch with any questions, thoughts or comments. Um, as I mentioned, I'm running a free January challenge um, called Your Romantic Rewrite, which I will also be hosting on YouTube, so please look out for that. Otherwise, if you are thinking of doing any work with me in the new year, please do book your free call now. Slots are getting booked up and I will pop all the details below.